How's it going, guys? And welcome to Gabe's Reef. Uh, today, I just wanted to do a quick update. Um, it's roughly been... Uh, it's been a little while since I've done an update, but uh, I recently, right after the one year... Around the one year anniversary of the tank, uh, I recently uh, re-aquascaped it. Um, I wanted to change it. I mainly had a giant rock formation right in the middle and it really had no open area for them to really swim. And uh, at least to me, it felt like it was, felt much smaller at least. So I re-aquascaped it, uh, reorganized the corals uh, a little bit. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. Um, you can see where the rocks used to be. I mean, I kind of get to it now, but some of the areas were... Uh, I haven't been able to clean as well. I'm going to get a new scraper that can lay closer and flatter. You can angle it, lock it in. So I'm going to be able to scrape all that. I know that right there is touching on that corner. Uh, honestly, it's been doing really, really well. Um, so my Duncans, and just give you a quick tour real quick of the corals. My Duncans has quite a few new heads growing, like on the sides of it, top, bottom. They are doing phenomenal, um, really, really well. Let me do a quick zoom and you can see heads. Let me get my face. See, you can see a couple, one right there, right there, up that way, all through there, there's new heads. They're getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the hammerhead corals is doing pretty well too. Uh, the stock of that was so much smaller when I got it and it's just grown so much bigger. The bottom of it's grown quite a bit. The the polyps themselves are getting pretty big, so that looks really good. Uh, finally, getting some length. These are supposedly torch corals. Uh, they've always had really really short tentacles. Till recently, I've been feeding them shrimp and you know a little bit better lighting than where I guess the uh, previous you know the uh, store had them under wasn't too good. So. They were kind of, they were very, very short. I could barely even see any tentacles. Um, and honestly, they're getting longer and longer. They're seeming, seeming doing pretty well. Um, I initially meant to to separate that stock. Broke a little short on that side, but it's okay. It's still, um, it's still growing and doing well. Uh, as far as candy canes go, the two stocks were too close together. One was kind of dying off against the rocks. So what I did is I separated them too. So there's one of the candy cane branches. And then the other one's just, I got it sticking out right there. Uh, I like it right there. It's, it's growing really well. The heads are getting pretty big on it. And then uh, let's see, um, these right here, these oanthians, if you want to call them, right through here are all free corals to start out with one and then all this colony grew it's kind of growing around the candy canes they're not really bothering each other too much and then the mushroom uh it was fairly big but it's grown much bigger since i've had it the uh <laughs> the uh anemone is doing really well um the big uh oscillaris clownfish just loves it he won't let the little one in. The little one's been staying by his Duncans. He actually gets in the Duncans. It's kind of funny because sometimes you'll see him just sticking his little fin up in the air. And he'll be literally in it. It's hilarious. Uh, so there's the anemone. And then I recent, I had a green star polyp. And it started out on a rock. You see it right there. And it kind of branched off and grew on the lower part of it. Right in that region. And then a piece broke off a while back. And I'm just kind of letting it grow on its own right there. Um... Not sure where to put that because I don't want it to cover anything. And then the leather tree was much smaller than that. And it's grown a lot lately. He really loves the spot he's in. No, really no one is bothering each other. Every once in a while, this mushroom gets upset because he's te technically right on the side of it. For a while there wasn't, but then, you know, the tentacles may sting it from time to time. So, uh honestly but the mushroom's still doing okay um if you see and then jumping over to this leather he was originally somewhere towards the top and you kind of see where the piece was of him right there 
where it kind of came off. Let me zoom in for you. So there's actually a piece of leather growing right there. So let me get my finger lined up right there is where that little piece of leather is growing. Uh, and then also a piece of the leather tree right there. It's doing really well. So if this starts growing there, that's fine. It's not going to bother me any. Um, what else? The Lobo. It was doing really, really good there for a long time. And then the last few days, it hasn't opened up to its full potential. Like, it's fine. It's opened up. It's just... Um, I did just clean some of the area. I didn't get the gravel too good because I was getting too much water out of here and I didn't want to drain that much water. So I need to hit the gravel again soon, but I was focusing on the gravel and I did have to move him. So usually his heads are much bigger. They look really well. And then these watermelons are doing phenomenal. Uh, it started out as a really small plug. You kind of see the plug right there. It was just a few little ones right there and it's just literally coated it all the way to back there um they are gonna and then there's green star polyp on this side of it which is gonna be interesting because this rock was kind of touching that because that's like basically almost upside down that rock we used to be like that you know on this side and the green star polyps are growing on this rock so it's gonna be interesting to see uh, i really don't want to battle for territory but it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes hopefully they just kind of continue to go around that way he grows that way and we'll see how it goes i may have to step in i don't know yet and then um there's the small hermit right there the small long shell and then that's a small snail next to him uh, i have a total of three snails there's one uh there's another i think both of them may be back here nope only one is back there and then there's another big one. Uh, I would imagine somewhere around here. He usually likes to sleep right there in that little indention he makes right there in that corner. He's somewhere around here. Uh, sometimes he's behind the rocks back there or on the rocks. He just kind of goes everywhere as he wants. Uh, but there's that snail. So three snails. And then I have one big hermit. That's actually in that big shell right there out of the three, the biggest one. That's the one he lives in. And then I have mushroom here. Uh, a couple more, but I think he got that. None of you kind of bothers him. It's hard to see in that angle right there. And then a couple on the other side. Um, I have a couple of yellow sponges. I like to call them SpongeBob. There's one up there between the hammerhead and the duncan and then uh there's another one uh right there and then another one right there so i like to call them sponge jobs um and then there is a emerald crab right uh it's the glass a little dirty it's gonna be hard to see maybe i get a different angle there we go there is my emerald crab uh He's pretty cool. I like him a lot. Uh, I really love emerald crabs. And as far as the fish goes, oh, look, he's doing a handstand thing. That's what he does. <laughs> he, like, literally before he would get stuck and you just see his little fins sticking up. It's so funny and cute. But that's where pretty much he hosts is the Duncans. And then the bigger ones in the anemone. And then there here is my, oh, don't be spooked. Usually he loves the camera. That's un that's very unusual for him to get spooked by the camera. Uh, usually he loves. Actually, he'll come up to the camera. Whenever I filmed it before, he'd come right up to it. I don't know why he's being a little sketchy right now. But here is my neon dotty back. Let's see if I get a good shot of him. There he is right there. <laughs> he is so beautiful. I love that fish. And then uh, my yellow-tailed Danzel is around here somewhere. There's the Dottie back again. <laughs> he loves going behind. If you notice, there's a significant gap all the way down through there. And there's also caves. So he, they can pop out from back there, back there, back there. Uh, hopefully we'll see the 
yellowtail danzel here in a minute and then here is my valen i guess he's a valentine saddle puffer fish he's doing really really well so cute look at him <laughs> he is so beautiful i love that fish always pecking and looking for food it's a good idea it's a good idea to have stuff for him to peck there's the dotty bag come on out buddy or not dotty bag but the yellow ted danzel he's a little shy sometimes um what else you kind of see him there he is right there i'll zoom in a little bit oh he just went on <laughs> so he's a little shy uh let's see what else I think I covered pretty much all the corals and everything. Um, I have a couple, I have a bunch of spare shells. So this little one right here, you may be upgrading soon to another shell. So there's, I made sure there's plenty of like medium and small shells. There's a couple other bigger ones for the bigger uh, hermit crab. There's a good shot of the dotty back right there. He is so pretty, I love him. Um, and I just got done treating some Aptasia. Uh, so with some Aptasia X, some Aptasia. There he is. Wow, he's a really dark color sometimes if you look at him. If he's not in the light, he's kind of a dark color. There he is right there. <laughs> I love him. He's pretty cool though. He's pretty, he's a decent size. He's starting to get a little big. Um, if you're looking at everybody's fins, no one really... Looks like they've been really, really nipped at, like, you know. Everyone looks in pretty good shape. Let me see. Yep. Everyone's fin still looks good. All the fish look pretty healthy. Um, as far as the filtration and everything, honestly, in my opinion, the 200 and, like, 30 gallon or 50, it's just under 300 gallon pump. That's back here, in my opinion, is a little bit small. That is your return pump. Uh... It's a little small. I wish they would put like a 350, 400. Uh, I may try to upgrade that or I may just leave that in there and then add a canister filter. I found one that's can do up to like 100 gallons or up to 60 or 70 gallons. And I was going to put it down below and then just run it through here, you know, just like anything else. And then just have, you know, the I may cut a hole right up here for the two hoses. So I have like a pickup. That goes that'll probably go behind the rocks and then something shooting it maybe on this side because there's one on that side kind of rippling the water you want that for it's good for gas exchange and you know you don't want no kind of no stagnant water you want to keep it moving the protein skimmer on these models do really really well you can see that dark kind of a not dark but you can see a little bit of waste there handles day-to-day -day waste these filters do really well i like the fact that it's um you know, a nice floss with a carbon. And then I just simply do two more layers of like this blue uh, kind of floss with a uh, Puri Chem Elite um, bag laying there for filter as well. And then I always replace the little, see that blue filter right there, that filter pad. I always it separates the second and third chamber always always clean that out it's usually like a black thick one i just buy the blue stuff and fold it and stick it in there always clean that replace it you'll see that'll get dirty and um honestly one of the most important things you can ever do for a bio cube is suck out the first chamber that gets really really gross down in there uh there's a 100 watt heater down in there i don't know if you can see the top of it or not i'll try to angle it but it's down in there, 100 watt heater, suction cups up against the back wall. I already set my temperature. Um, in the winter time, it's not as warm as the summer, so it kind of gives them a little bit of a change. You don't want your, you want to keep your temperature within, I guess, like a degree. So there's what my temperature runs at. You can focus. To me, it looks like 71. So two, four, six, around about 76, 77 degrees. Uh, usually it's about, 78 to 79 in the summertime no higher than 80 and it's usually never below uh 75 so uh you don't want it to be you know gra gradually you don't want it to gradually change like you don't want it to just jump and always have your temperatures change typically it stays within one degree and then the salinity i like to keep it at 
about 124 ish 120 about 124 and i think it's like 31 parts per million because i think 125 is like 32 parts per million so i keep it somewhere around there i try to not let that bounce around um i have these they're they're supposed to be like 260 gallons 260 gallon circulation pumps um i keep two of them this new layout i have to you know keep everything kind of circulating moving so i keep one on this side one on the other recently this right here is the only thing i failed on this i had this for well over a year pump works perfect the suction cup little latch thing when i was cleaning the tank to move it to clean it uh, that's why i don't recommend really moving these too much because with time these can break the magnet ones are much better if you can find the right size and they're much more expensive of course these are like 10 bucks or something but that little latch right there broke so it couldn't suction cup so what i did is i ordered a new one for 9.99 from amazon got it the next day and i just put the new suction cup on stuck the pump on there and then kept the new pump in there as a spare so if it um one of them burn out or gives out or something breaks on it i could just slide on the new pump and just keep everything moving um <laughs> there he is See, he's usually not too shy of the camera let me zoom in a little bit uh, as far as the stand and everything everything's holding up well plenty of room down there uh like i said i'm gonna put the canister filter as a hole back there behind that bag but the canister filter right there it's not that tall it's about this tall i'd say probably like that wide maybe a little bit more has like a i think like a uh four or five hundred gallon like a three or four hundred gallon little pump in there so that's all you need it can circulate up to like it's rated for like 60 gallons or 100 so you know me bumping it up from you know 260 270 whatever that is to another 300 would be perfect that'd give me so much better nutrient not nutrient so much removal, but so much more waste removal um while you see a lot of this right here in my gravel i gravel vacuum it it's not the best gravel vacuum so it doesn't get it all perfectly but uh you can see uh some of it right there how the gravel looks spotted like that i kind of don't like that i like really white bright gravel looks so amazing when you can keep it that way but it's hard because i do feed shrimp every day so this guy right here the puffer fish loves shrimp you get them to eat pellets as well but they're mainly going to want to eat the shrimp uh, an enemy eats shrimp <laughs> my duncans eat shrimp the lobo eats shrimp uh pretty much all these corals can somewhat digest some kind of shrimp or something like it so you know it's quite a bit of waste in here the cleanup crew isn't it the snails do okay but it really needs to be cleaned it's not i don't have enough cleanup of a crew to really make a difference i mean it helps a little bit but uh it just it's not enough for what i have so uh, i still have most of the fish food flakes i don't put it in there that much i do have them uh algae pellets when i first started i don't know why i got those i thought maybe they didn't have enough algae or something kind of keep them alive while the tank was maturing i still have my original hydromina i don't recommend these at all uh even though this is an instant ocean there's too many air bubbles you always got to tap it make sure it's perfectly level and just a pain in the butt to use i recommend the refractometer um uh let me set this in here of course i can't see uh these spectrum pellets are probably my oscillaris clownfish favorite food and the yellowtail damsel and the neon dotty back is loving these uh the puffer fish will eat them but it's not their it's not his favorite obviously the shrimp is um these are very nutritious very good for your fish and i got the small ones because the dotty back's mouth isn't that big either as the uh Danzel, so i try to get the smaller ones my bigger clownfish could probably eat some bigger ones his mouth's really big but honestly um not the not the literal one cannot uh always keep a heat well a um uh heat or well, laser i forget what is that thermal gun or whatever you want to call it just to kind of when i'm mixing up water in a bucket just to make sure that thermometer you know the the heater works well and it can detect you know what temperature it is and make sure it's heating up right um you can also check the tank with it even though the glass kind of messes with it a little bit well no it says 76 degrees and that's about what it is so it's pretty accurate i guess um 
refactometer is the best ones you can get they're only like 20 bucks this is your best bet right here just make sure you have uh, distilled water to calibrate it and then from there on i haven't had to readjust it or anything i just put a couple of drops of water and then it always tells me what it is this isn't like a really high-end brand or anything i think it was only like 20 bucks on amazon as far as the testing kit go i got the saltwater master plus like a, basically every other one you can get phosphate ammonia uh, alkalinity magnesium uh pretty much everything you can think of i can test for which is always nice uh initially i planned on dosing a bunch but i realized i really don't need it for the tank i have as long as i change the water once a week it kind of replenishes most of everything um i have protein you know the protein scam i have a very small air pump back there kind of hear it uh i recommend if you get a power strip switches these are live so i can I can turn off each individual channel without having to unplug wires, having them all ran over. I pretty much memorized which one it is. You know, first one, uh, protein, right pump, left pump, uh, main uh, return, uh, heat, light. So I know exactly which one it is. Once you've had it on there for a while, you kind of memorize it. Um, these little pipes right here, I usually typically use them. I have quite a few of them. So you'll see the one I feed uh, photoplankton when it's kind of green. Uh, the really, really thick, thicker one, not as long as for like um, other nutrition or food. And then this long skinny one is actually for uh, dosing. If I have to like a little bit of calcium or what else, I also have one down here, a little bit bigger one if I have to do a higher milligram. Um, you know, as far, I do have everything like alkalinity, magnesium, uh, iodine you know i didn't have everything that you need to dose um just in case the levels go down or i need to add some uh, i do also have coralroids you know what i mean those are very very important um you know i have all the good you know lines in case i want to do a drip and acclimate something uh measure that's really important this, this is a half cup for like salt so when i mix my salt mix i know i you know i don't know how many of these i gotta put in per gallon or whatever uh this is the main way how i feed turkey bases i think are the best you can they come right up to it oops there's a little bit of water in there <laughs> you, they come up right up to it eat uh have a net to get them out if i have to connect it to the scraper these are always good to remove stuff you don't want to touch toothbrush uh, older toothbrush i do clean and wash it uh these are good to like clean little parts on like the circulation pumps um, you know anything that needs to be cleaned out these work really well uh they say to keep a little notepad and notes i did that originally i kept track of like how my levels were and changing i realized after you have the tank for so long and you constantly do the same water change everything was pretty well balanced uh i never had any spikes or any issues or crashes yet fingers crossed but like i said you know i keep doing the same routine and it's worked so really well for me obviously do the reef uh crystal one that's got you know the calcium everything i need in it uh there's a little tank right there there's an extra heater which heats up the bucket where i mix the water in and then the other side of the circulation pump and then that thing right there just basically has aptasia x any kind of fungus or any kind of cytobacteria anything i have a treatment stuff in there and that thing for it stuff like that you know uh i have a little bit of paste to help trap corals now i did you get the perp the red it isn't red isn't that bad looking kind of see it there kind of see it actually it was i was getting frustrated because i would put a little bit and they wouldn't stay so i just got tired of messing with it so i put more than i probably should have and but i know that they're not gonna fall i hate my corals falling over and getting upset then they close up and i have to wait for them to open back up it's just a fiasco but uh honestly tank no leaks everything's held up fine I absolutely love the fact that you can see all the chambers behind there. I have mine a little close to the wall. I honestly recommend giving yourself some space just so you can kind of see what's going on, how the flow is going through the chambers, what's going on with what. There's some sand. Uh, once you gravel vacuum and clean it, sometimes I do get some of my sand. Over time, it does, uh, <laughs> it does get some sand out of here, so I have to replenish it. I usually keep like a big... Oh, oh, water. I buy uh, water from Kroger's. Uh, it's their purified water. It's uh, reverse osmosis and advanced filtration. So it's really, really good water. 
Uh, my little glass cleaner, these are always nice. Uh, as far as the lighting and everything, it's worked perfect. I thought I had an issue a while back, but it wasn't. It was the time, the way it was set. Uh, it comes on when it should. It turns off when it should. Works perfectly. Uh, love it. Love the fact that it's LED. It has little fans in there that helps cool it. Uh, just remember to clean this glass every once in a while. Ooh, that's bright. Remember to clean this glass. So you can see like a little calcification, a little bit of calcium right there. I thought I'd see a lot more, uh, what's that called? Salt Creek or salt, whatever. thought I'd see a lot more, but it isn't that bad. Um, a lot of folks use the digital. I just like this because it's battery's not going to die. I don't have to worry about it messing up. Uh, they're within one, uh, I think they're like within one uh, degree of it. Because I think they said it was 76. And I used my laser gun put on our 76. So it's pretty accurate from what I can tell. Um, these rounded are painting a butt clean i stayed on top of it and then i kind of let it go a little bit and then boom just crustaceans moved right in kind of took over these strips i don't mind it so much the back wall i think looks cool a lot of folks don't like it they scrape it they're robbing them of my nutrition yada 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 honestly it don't bother me um and i think it's fine i think it looks better than just a plain black honestly um what else that's really the overview of the tank and how things are going uh i'd do it again i'd buy this tank and set up in, in a heartbeat it looks really good um really really good um i love the size of it 32 gallons isn't a small tank but it isn't a big one either it's it's i think it's a little bit above nano nano to me is like from like nine gallons to like 20 semi or 15 gallons is well, nano this is like still small but now i wouldn't call it nano um i thought about upgrading to a bigger tank but honestly it would just be a lot of a lot more work i got this going it's becoming it's becoming a mature tank uh it's just doing so well uh, as long as i keep changing the uh water and feeding these guys i'm good um you know that's pretty much it uh, like I said, I, I probably recommend getting, it's on Amazon. It's like $63. I, uh, I think it's like a one, they call it a 1000 cause it can do up to like, I don't know. It's not a thousand gallons. I don't know why they call it a 1000, but I think you can do up to 60 or hundred or 80 or something like that. Somewhere around that range. So adding that to this filtration will pretty much, uh, get rid of all that extra nutrition, and everything else that you don't need in your tank, uh, especially if uh, you can do, you know, pure cam replace it. They say replace it every two to three months. You could probably do like a month, month and a half just to really have it removing those phosphates and, you know, things like that. It can be harmful. Um, you know, there's, there's quite a bit, you know, dose giving them that much shrimp. And, uh, well, not that much, but giving them shrimp every day can add a lot of waste into your tank. So, honestly, for me, that canister filter will fix a lot. A lot of folks, you know, turn the back of this tank, the back of these, the, this chamber into a refugium, which is very easy to do. Uh, if you have a canister filter, all you simply need to do is remove the entire basket, put a light back there, put whatever, you know, whatever basically whatever um algae whatever macro whatever you want back there and then you still have your first chamber for your heater and your protein skimmer and then you have your natural you know filtration slash refugium which can have your digger pods copepods whatever you want and then your pump <laughs> they grow in there trust me the pump will blow them out of here a lot of the babies a lot of them will make it uh you can even come back there and kind of net some out and put them here if you needed to feed them uh that's the only way I had a mandarin uh, dragonette, and honestly, that was one of my favorite fish, and I spent a fortune. Every week, I'd get off and spend $28 for a little bottle of Tigger Pods and Copa Pods, and he would eat them so fast that he'd be hungry. I could tell he hungry. Towards the end, when I saw him kind of almost not doing them, but he was getting skinnier and skinnier, towards the end, he started eating shrimp, but it was not enough, honestly feel terrible i wish they would have i wish i would have had a refugium at the time that would have been uh a big thing i am going to start 
kind of introducing them again into the tank. I want to build up a he he healthy population. Now I have starfish, lots of them. Uh, where are they at? They're kind of, of course, I can't find them now. And I'm looking. There's one there, but there's some really, really big ones. I mean, fairly sized big ones, pretty decent sized big ones. If I could find them. Um, so that's good. You know, I try to have lots of diverse, you know, uh, creatures and stuff in here. Um, long as he keeps pecking to keep his beak. Well, it's like kind of like it's not a beak, but it's it. it his little mouth continues to grow and he needs to pack to kind of keep it down. I've seen folks having to, you know, horror stories, people having to do open it and open his mouth and feed him until he get it removed or adjusted or whatever. Like just, you know, do your research on each fish, figure out if it's right for you, right for your tank. Honestly, they recommend a 40 gallon tank for him. Uh, 40 to 50 32 is kind of i wouldn't say I, it's it's on the small side but he'll be fine i'll watch him as he grows they don't typically get big they're the smallest one of the smaller ones that a puffer fish if not the smallest probably um a little bit of salt creek right there uh try to get that off as much as you can well the most point the most area i'll get the most is like right here you can kind of see it a little bit right there i try to brush it and wipe it off so it doesn't really build up a little bit like right there just whenever any little crack every once in a while you'll see it build up but it's not as bad as i thought it would be honestly the lid is a huge <laughs> um i know those rimless tanks are amazing yada yada but i've seen situations where one of my clownfish was chasing the other or something or something startles them. i seen him jump and i've heard him hit this lid like if i wasn't here and he jumped out he'd be dead uh i've had a suicidal snail I don't know if he went out of this little back hole back here or when I had the lid up cleaning it and he climbed, he was on it or something and he climbed up it and like fell off and died back there. Like you just have to, you just have to think about things like that. Honestly, a lot of fish will jump. Uh, this lid helps with, kind of keeps the smell down a little bit. Your main thing is gonna be your carbon for smell. Obviously your carbon, replace that, yada, yada. But this look this hood does help with that and it actually helps a lot with evaporation I, I know a few folks that have the rimless jobs and they have to have an automatic water top off and all this fancy stuff honestly i can change i change the water once a week and after evaporation it barely even goes down uh make sure you keep it above the minimum i keep it substantially above the minimum um sometimes it gets a little low i just have to go get a jug of water but Evaporation ain't as bad as you think. In the summertime, it happens a lot more than the winter because the temperature's up a little bit on it. But in the wintertime, really, I change the water once a week. I don't have to add any water. Even in the summertime, if you change it once a week, you don't have to add water. So it's really convenient having a lid. You can see, you know, water on it from kind of evaporation. It kind of goes back in. Some of it does. Some of it doesn't. Uh, like I said, keep this. I need to actually clean mine. I need to wipe it and clean it. Um... Oh, it has a bunch of numbers and stuff on there. It says BioCube32, yada, yada, a bunch of numbers and stuff. I haven't had any of my LEDs burned out. They're all on right now, and none of them are burnt out. Uh, I have it set up to where it starts in the morning, uh, just scheduling. I do run mine kind of long. That's another reason why you see so much growth and stuff. In the, It's not all just uh, nutrition and uh, phosphates or whatever you want to call it. It's, some of it is, honestly, the light running so long. So it starts with a light blue moonlight like thought i heard something on my door light blue moonlight in the morning at 6 a.m starts to get brighter and brighter and then the the main light will come on and those will the blue light will stay on with it all day long and then it'll be a high intensity and then this will dim down and then the blue light take over and then it'll get lower 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 and then turn off so there's a lot of light for a long period of time so that really <laughs> promotes a lot of algae growth uh but uh, i don't want it completely spotless this isn't a show tank honestly i want there to always be some kind of algae on the rocks or something for obviously my uh cleanup crew i know it's kind of kind of weird that you you know cleanup crew you want it to be clean clean but honestly it's an ecosystem it's not going to be perfect and flawless this isn't a show tank i just really enjoy the hobby and enjoy uh you know watching them and they're just they have such great personalities and 
it, it's it's a lot of fun honestly you know i i literally could watch this all day um luckily i have not had him puff yet so him puffing is a stress or a defense mechanism so that's a good thing i've never seen him puff which is a good thing you don't want that to happen uh, they, uh, just a quick tip, don't ever use a net for him. When I got him, though, I did something I never do is I just dumped the whole bag with the water in the tank. Of course, I'd set the bag here, let it adjust at the temperature, you know, put it in the water, but I normally never, ever dump the fish tank store water into mine. I, if you were to dump that and he was being a net, he'd be scared, he'd puff up, he'd get an air bubble, or I forget what that's called, and it can, it's not, it's, it's bad news for him, so... I just chose to go ahead and just dump that water. It wasn't that much, you know, and doesn't look any, it, I haven't noticed anything bad or anything yet. So that's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much everything. They're getting hung, they're hungry. Uh, I do feed only once a day. I don't want to feed twice a day. That'd be ridiculous amount of waste. It's already enough as it is. Produce, they produce enough waste. So. Uh, honestly, I feed once a day uh, shrimp and pellets. So the main course is shrimp. I like barely squeeze any out. They eat it. I squeeze a little bit more out. They eat it. I don't just let it. I don't just throw a whole chunk in there and let it blow everywhere and get everywhere. I try to, you know, control the feeding. That helps out a lot with your waste management and everything. Um, feed your corals. You know, the the anemone will eat them. The Duncans, the hammerheads, the torches. Uh, even candy canes will eat a, eat some shrimp. But Lobo loves shrimp. Like, don't be afraid to feed them. Uh, coral roids, I don't do that often because I don't want them getting crazy, crazy big. I just want them to be healthy and not grow slow per se, but just the normal rate. I don't want to rush it and keep feeding it all this nutrition and putting all this nutrition in the tank. So, uh, but honestly, I think everything's doing well. It's not the cleanest, but everything seems to be happy and healthy from at least what I can tell. So, I'm super happy about that. Um, this video went a little long, but just kind of overviewing everything and uh, kind of telling you everything I've done and what I've what I've experienced with this tank. Um, I would definitely recommend it. Just make sure. Um, honestly, I wouldn't get no more than uh, five fish if it was me. I would not do more than five fish. Uh, you can do quite a few corals. Just make sure you give yourself room. Honestly, these are a little close together. Uh, they say like a thumb roll. Some play pe people say six inches. Some people say eight inches. Honestly, as long as they're not touching and there's no chemical warfare going on or them battling over territory, you kind of have to watch that. Um, he and enemies will sting everything. They're pain in the butt. Oh, you just got to hope that they stay in a spot that you pick. He typically just wanders from that little cave right there to about there. Sometimes he'll be on the back side of that around there. But mainly, I'm glad he stays in that area. I don't think he can reach that coral yet. The mushrooms has kind of gotten used to it, and he's still growing and doing okay. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, you can see the old paste, the white. I don't ever recommend you buying the white paste. It takes forever for stuff to grow on it and cover it up. I need to get that out, honestly. Uh, just like an old screw, a screwdriver or something with a metal point, you can just kind of pop it and it kind of breaks up, grab, take it out of the tank and remove it. Uh, I did it in some other places, remove most of it. I just didn't get that. I need to get that. There's some back there too I need to get where I initially tried to put him back there and he kept falling back there behind these rocks and it was just a pain in the butt. And I just went back because I had two pieces of uh, dry rock. Well, it was live rock at the time, but uh, I removed it, put it in a bucket outside, and then I went back and grabbed one and put him in it, an opening, and he's just caught himself to the coral now, to the rock, and he seems to be doing well. So I'll just leave him grow like that. I think the, that looks cool there. The Lobo is on little island, three little islands, you know, with a little cliff slide kind of design. So I'm pretty much happy with it. Um, what else? I got an automatic feeder. Uh, honestly, uh, I've gone on vacation for, what was it? Five days, six days, six days, five or six days. And I was fine. What I did is, um, I didn't have the, I didn't have him to where I needed to fit him shrimp every day, but I had the Danzel. I had, uh, that's less clownfish. What else did I have? I had some fish. 
and I just put in the automatic, I open this up like that, and I clipped on the automatic feeder here and set it up. Uh, I set up a couple days in advance to make sure that it fed correctly and it fed a decent amount. The pellets, and apparently it worked because they made it six days. Uh, had it came back, everything was fine. So um, that worked. Um, it just depends on what you have and what's going on. Make sure. I just changed the water before I left, fed him some shrimp before I left, and then filled it up with those little pellets. And it worked really well. So I was happy with that. But uh, that's it, really. Uh, what else? I'm thinking. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, I know this video is a little long, but, you know, I just wanted to share that with you guys and give you guys an honest opinion about it. Uh, it's definitely a thumbs up. I think it looks good. Two thumbs up. I think it looks good. You can really make it your own and just do, just take your time, you know, don't rush there. I kind of rush my aquascaping a little bit. Take your time with your aquascaping. Put the rocks in first. Get them where you want them. Don't be afraid to get pins in there. Don't be afraid to glue it. Get them really solid and then put the sand around it. That way if you get a goby or something that moves sand, it doesn't cause your rocks to shift and fall. That's terrible. So uh, just tips like that. Uh, depends on what you want. This is a medium. They can still sand sift this. The fine I think is just too fine. Uh, they make a bigger one, but they don't recommend it for sand sifting gobies and stuff like that. So just do your research, find out what you want. This light is good. A lot of folks tell me it's not adequate enough for a an enemy. There's an enemy doing just fine. So really, I mean, I do run it a lot though. You know what I mean? That's another thing. You have to run a lot. These lights are, these corals are growing. And these, this light is not bad. Uh, it's LED, you know, it doesn't consume a crazy amount uh, of electricity, but... Uh, yeah, honestly, you can pretty much have most of the corals. You just gotta take care of them. You know, you get harder to take care of corals. Obviously, you gotta watch water parameters more. There's a lot more to it. So just do your research, find what you like, and go run with it, you know? So hopefully you guys enjoy the hobby as much as I do. So thanks for watching. I think now that's finally covering everything. Uh, prices, I'm not gonna get into it just cause it depends on what you buy, when you buy it, if you catch a sale or not. Uh, you know stuff like that everything changes things change so i'm not going to give pricing they're not that expensive honestly i'd buy the tank and stand and then just get everything else you want for it you know but uh it you can't lose unless you want to build your own stand that's also fine but that's really nice because the wires goes behind it has a cutout everything goes in there and like looking at the back of it i undid some of the wires but i did initially have it all twisted up nicely and then it goes right into the hole boom so it's it's slick the way it is i'm sure you could do something if you built one yourself, you could do it as well. But, you know, it's just nice that you don't have to build one if you don't want to. So, uh, there you have it. So, I think that's finally covering everything. Thanks for watching. Like he's saying goodbye. <laughs> See, he isn't shy. He definitely likes to come up to the tank. So does the Dan's I was surprised he was shy earlier. So, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully you stop by the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little long, but give me a thumbs up if you found it information useful or if you just enjoyed watching it or you like the channel i appreciate it uh don't forget to subscribe if you're not and that's it see you guys next time